Praise the Lord. Today is uh, 4th of July, Independence Day. And we celebrate Independence Day as, uh, as the day our nation achieved its liberty and its freedom from Great Britain. Not once, but twice. I mean, we fought that war for freedom not once, but twice. We fought it in 1776 through 1781, 82, and then we fought it again in 1812. We fought for uh, the freedom of our nation. And we did so because we, people came and settled in this nation because they wanted freedom of religion. They wanted freedom uh, to represent themselves. They wanted freedom uh, from taxation and freedom from uh, the dictatorship of Great Britain. That's what we wanted freedom from and for. Amen. And, uh, and today, the same is true. Americans want to be free. Amen. We want to be free from oppression. We want to be free from people who would tell us and, and appoint to us something that we have to do. You know, we have a constitutional right to the freedom, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble ourselves one with another, the freedom of speech. How many like to be able to say freedom of speech? Amen. Freedom of opinion, freedom, freedom to believe, freedom to assemble ourselves together, freedom to the right to bear arms. You know, I mean, we hold our freedoms dear and precious to us when someone tries to take our freedom. Americans as all have always stood up. And said, no, I'm free. Free by divine right of God. And the same is true today with our freedom in Jesus Christ. We have been set free from the law of sin and death. We've been set free from the bondage of sin. We've been set free from a mindset. We've been set free from anxiety, from depression. We've been set free from these things that the enemy uses to keep us in chains. Now, now. We are no longer slaves to Great Britain. And Jesus has made us no longer slaves to the enemy, to Satan. Because Satan wants to hold us in chains of bondage. You and I. He wants us to hold us in regret. He wants to, us, he wants to hold us in bondage to relationships that are not reconciled. You know? We're told in, 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 by Jesus in the, in the New Testament not only to forgive those who have offended us, but to go to them and to make things right and be reconciled to them. Somebody say amen. We have been given a ministry of reconciliation. And, and if there are people today that you are not reconciled to, friends, let me tell you something. Make it right because the enemy will rob you of your peace and joy until you make it right. And, and the enemy will... That unreconciled relationship will grieve the Holy Spirit within you until we make it right. Until we get those relationships right. And I want to share with you just for a moment this morning about our history in Greene County. And about uh, our forefathers. How many here would say I'm Scotch-Irish? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. A lot of people. How many would say I'm German Huguenot. Okay, we got some Huguenots there, astronauts. How many would say I am uh, of Swiss descent? How many? Any? How about Great Britain? Anybody? People came from France. We, uh, um, uh, America has been known as a melting pot, right? As a melting pot, and the people that came across the mountains from North Carolina and Virginia and South Carolina, Greene County was the frontier in the 1700s. It was west. There was no Pacific Northwest or Pacific Southwest. Uh, Green County, Washington County, Sullivan County, and up into Kentucky, it was the frontier. And they were, uh, they were uh, a brave and fearless sort of people. And they settled this land. They chopped down trees. They built cabins. They, they plowed the ground for the first time and removed the stumps and, and, and uh, hunted uh, game here and they fought off Indians here because the Cherokee weren't too too uh, cordial sometimes and other tr Indian tribes didn't want to give up their land so easy and so the people that settled here they were hunters gatherers and they were fighters brother I mean they would fight and there was a general that I want to share this with you there was a general and uh, and his name was uh, Patrick Ferguson or he was a major and he was under the command of General Cornwallis. How many have heard of General Cornwallis in the Revolutionary War? And uh, 
And Patrick Ferguson, he was actually a very, uh, he was actually a very uh, uh, intelligent, up and coming major in the British uh, military. And he had invented uh, rifles and weapons. And he was, he was supposed to be the stuff, you know. And he was told by General Cornwallis, you go through the South and you gather together loyalists to Great Britain to join your, your uh, battalion. And if you find any stragglers and anybody that will revolt and any patriots that want to uh, join up with the American forces, you kill them. You wipe them out. And so that was his job. And so he sent a message. They captured a young scout one day and, and he was a patriot. And, and Major Ferguson, he, he, uh, he, he uh, forgave the offense, you know, he pardoned him, and he said, I want you to take a message back to the patriots across the mountain and tell them to lay down their arms and to swear allegiance to Great Britain, or else I will come across the mountain with my army and I will burn their farms, I will kill their leaders, I will take their families and their women for myself, and he just made himself a, an offense to the frontiersmen. And some people told him, you probably ought not to make these people mad. That's what somebody told him. You probably ought not to make these people mad. But he did. And John Severe, how many have heard of John Severe? If you know the state of Franklin, you know John Severe. Uh, and John Ray and some other people, John Crockett, who was the father of Davy Crockett, they got together and they said, we can either sit here and wait for him or we can take the fight to him. And they got up a bunch of volunteers from the east, from right here. And they said, let's go. And they got their bayonets and they got their guns. They got anything that they could use to poke somebody's eye out. <laughs> and their wives went with them. Listen to me. This is, how, this is how unique East Tennessee is. They left their farms with their children and with their neighbors who were too elderly to go and fight. And their wives went with them and they prepared food and they prepared the game that was shot and the provisions. And they went to Elizabeth and Sycamore Shoals. How many know of Sycamore? And they met some other patriots there. And then from there, they had to cross mountain after mountain, hunting. They were hunting Patrick Ferguson, Major Patrick Ferguson. And they caught up with him at Kings Mountain in South Carolina. And 900 patriots or so took on 1,200 or more well-provisioned well, uh, and well-armed British soldiers. Not all of them were British. Some of them were patriots and some of them were people who, who uh, were uh, conscripted into the British army. You will either fight for us or you'll die. So in the middle of the night, they, they, there was a huge rainstorm. Huge, it was in September. Uh, no, no, it was on October 7th. I, I apologize. And they circled the mountain on King's Mountain. It wasn't a real high mountain, but it, they circled the mountain in the middle of the night. And... and and uh, Major Ferguson said, nobody will attack us after a storm like this. It's cold, it's windy, nobody will come against us. But you see, the patriots, the over-mountain men, that's what they were called, over-mountain men, they knew that the rain would cause the leaves to be soft and squishy, and it wouldn't make noise. And they marched up that mountain, and they hid behind rocks and boulders. And by the time the British knew that they were surrounded, it was too late. And those, uh, those mountain men, there was a man that was there that was named McDowell. How many, know, how many heard of Samuel Doak? Anybody heard of Samuel Doak? Samuel Doak said that the British was like the Midian army and that they were like Gideon and his mighty men. And he said, for the sword of the Lord, for, for the Lord our God and for the sword of the Lord, for the sword of Gideon, and he reared them up and readied them for battle. And McDowell, he said this, let's scream like madmen and fight like devils. <laughs> and by the time the British, by the time the British uh, realized that they were in a battle, it was too late. And you know what? The battle of Kings Mountain lasted a full total of almost 65 minutes. <laughs> Those frontiersmen, those over-the-mountain men completely overran and destroyed the British on King's Mountain. Now, why is that important? Because the, the patriots, 
the America and the American colonies, they had already lost the Battle of Charleston just a few months before. And they lost to the British the Battle of Camden. And the battle in the South was going all the British way. But when these rednecks surrounded the British army on King's Mountain and in 65 minutes destroyed them. And the, one, of the, one of the mottos or one of the, one of the shouts that was heard Ain't going home till we see him killed. That's what they said. We ain't going home until we see Major Ferguson killed. And you know what? They gave no regard to officers and they shot General or Major Major Ferguson, Patrick Ferguson, multiple times. Multiple times. They took over five hundred prisoners from the British Army and killed close to three hundred. Of the frontiersmen, of the over-the-mountain men, only 28 were killed. Only 28 were killed. Friends, they valued their freedom. And they fought for it. They took the fight to the enemy. And in the same way, you and I are to take the fight to the enemy of our souls, which is Satan. He wants to destroy you. He wants to tear you down. He wants to ensnare you. He wants to take your heart, your mind, your peace, and your love. He wants to take your relationship with God. Listen to me. This is the truth. He wants to take your relationship away from God. That's what Jesus said. When the enemy comes, he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And if he can separate us enough from God and cause us to doubt, then the enemy can enter in and he can cause fear, uncertainty, he can cause all manner of chaos and confusion. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is not the author of confusion, but the author of peace. That's what scripture says. And in John chapter 8, verse 30. In John chapter 8, verse 30, Jesus said in verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You can't be a disciple of Jesus Christ without abiding and living and the word of God living inside of you. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The truth shall what? Make you free. As long as we are living in a reality that is according to the spirit of God, we will be free people. And the enemy can't load us up with chains of regret, chains of unforgiveness and unreconciled relationships. He can't load us down with, with things that, will, that do not make for peace. That's what Jesus said of Jerusalem. You don't even know the things which make for your peace. And I want to have peace today. Amen. I want to have a peace that surpasses all of my understanding. And they answered him. And they answered him a lie. When Jesus said this, Rome was the authority in Palestine and in Israel. And Rome had defeated the Jews in in multiple battles and conquered them and killed them and exiled some of them. And this is what they said to Jesus. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. They lied straight up. They were paying taxes to Caesar and they hated it. <laughs> they hoped that, that God would send a Messiah and set them free from Rome. And you know what? The Jews today are looking for God to send a Messiah that would set them free from, from Saudi Arabia and from Iran and from, their, and from the, the Palestinians. They're still looking for a Messiah that will elevate Israel and make them number one in the world today. But Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Somebody say amen. Jesus didn't get involved in politics. And beloved, I encourage you not to get involved in politics either. Because it will rob you of all your peace and joy. Somebody say amen. We can't fix what goes on in Washington. I mean, that's a world unto itself. Amen. But we can maintain our peace here. We can maintain our peace here. And they said, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? And Jesus answered them and said, most assuredly, he said, this is certain. I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And friends, this is why Jesus set us free. Because if we continue on in sin, Jesus said, we're a slave to it. But Jesus came to set us free from sin. Sin that so easily besets us and sin that snares us. And sin that grieves the Holy Spirit within us. Sin that hurts other people. Let's understand that today. Sin hurts people. Somebody say amen. We can recognize that in our nation today. Sin hurts people. 
Sin hurts the unborn and it hurts the elderly. Oh, please hear me, hear me. Unless our nation, friends, we've got to be diligent and we've got to be fervent because the enemy loves sin and he wants to see it spread in our government, both nationally at a state level and locally. Some of the greatest people that are at risk and are victims today are the very young and the very old. And both of them are precious in the sight of God. When we fail to love, then we enter into a place where sin can abound. But Jesus said, I came that you might be free from sin. The enemy can't shackle you. Fr friends, when we're free from sin, there's no more divorce. Somebody say amen. There's no more fear of divorce. When, when we are free from sin, then we are free to love our wives and our husbands from our hearts. We're free to serve the Lord. When we are free, we are free indeed. And Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. Jesus said a slave doesn't abide in the house of God forever. We've heard over and over, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. Friends, you don't have to be. You can be free from sin. And Jesus gave us that victory <clears throat> through the Holy Spirit's power. He says, I, he said, uh, a, a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. You're free indeed. You're free to go. You're free to live your life. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly in hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 i want to show you this real quick in hebrews 2 14 how many how many would say i have a fear or two today a concern a burden a worry i'm concerned about my nation yeah i'm concerned about families in our nation because families are under attack both in the church and outside the church there are as many diverse divorces in the church of Jesus Christ as there are outside the church. And that should not be, friends. Somebody say amen. Children are separated from parents and husband and wife separated from, from, from husband and wife. And, and it all happens, Jesus said, because of a hardness of heart. Churches today are diminished after COVID. And it shouldn't be. The body of Christ is where Jesus is. The flock, the shepherd of, 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 uh, of the, the sheep, of the, of the flock. He's in the church, amen? And that's where people love one another. That's where we fit together as a body of Christ, as a body of believers. And we all have concerns and we all, all have fears. But let me, say, let me tell you something. God came to set us free from fear and worry and concern. He came to set you free and me free. That doesn't mean we're not going to be prepared. But that means we don't have to fear because our father knows what we have need of. Our father knows before we know the storm that's coming. Our father prepares us before it gets here. So that when it gets here, it won't take him, us by surprise. Nothing takes him by surprise. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 says, uh, verse 14 says, since the children have flesh and blood, listen to this. Since we, the children of God, have flesh and blood, he too shared in our humanity, in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Until Jesus, until Jesus came and lived a perfect life and died on Calvary's cross, people were scared out of their minds about death and it, it was uncertain there was a belief in the resurrection of the dead but they weren't sure about it there was no proof but listen to me while jesus lived and walked this earth he raised people from the dead and he showed them i have power over the death i have power over death he raised lazarus who was four days dead he raised a, a, a widow's son he raised a little girl. He raised people from the dead. And friends, God will raise one day from the dead your loved ones and mine. 
their bodies will come out of the ground perfect and glorified and be joined with the Father. One day He will raise every dead person who is in Christ, whether they're in the ground or in the sea or ashes, God will raise the dead to life in glorified bodies. And He came to defeat Him who held the power of death, that is the devil, and free. Listen to this. Jesus came to set free and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. He came to set people free who was afraid of dying. Why? Because to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. I have been at the bedside of saints who were passing from this life unto the next. And there was no fear. There was no trembling. There was no torment. There was no uncertainty. They were looking for a city whose builder and maker was the Lord. They were ready to move on. They said, pull the plug, let me out of here. I'm going home to be with my Jesus. I'm going home to be with my God. I'm not bound here. I'm free. I'm ready to go. Paul said, for me to live and is Christ and to die is gain. Somebody say amen. And Jesus came to set you free from death, from the fear of death. We don't have to fear death anymore because we know who holds death and who holds life and who holds eternity for surely it is not angels listen to this verse 16 it says for surely it is not angels he helps but abraham's descendants jesus helps you and i he ever lives to pray for you and i jesus is praying for you and i today seated next to the Father in heavens. In heaven's throne room. Jesus helps us. And he sent us a helper who is the Holy Spirit, who gives us courage and strength, who gives us love and ability. And friends, in these last days, we're going to need the power and the love and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives daily, every single day. Every, Dr. David Jeremiah, I don't know if you caught his messages this week, but he said, I expect in these last days that, that the, the, uh, the works and the activity of angels will increase upon the earth as well as the activity and the works of the demonic, the, the demonic activity on the earth. But we rest assured in this, Jesus has overcome the world and Jesus has overcome Satan. And we are free today, free from the bondage of sin and the snare of sin and the fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them. He had to be made like us so that he could set us free, fully human in every way, in order that he might be a, become a merciful and faithful high priest. He had to be human and tempted in all points like you and I. Was he tempted to get mad? Was he tempted to overeat? Was he tempted to be lazy? Huh? Was he tempted to be greedy and selfish? Come on. He was tempted in all points and without sin in every one of them. Praise God. Why? So he could be a perfect high priest who understands what we're going through. He doesn't excuse it. He, 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 he can teach us to live above that. He can give us the power through His Holy Spirit to live above all those, all those snares of the enemy. But friends, I want you to know today, Jesus was in all points tempted as you and I, yet without sin. Fully human in every way in order that He might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that He might make atonement for the sins, that He might make atonement for the sins of the people. Of, because he himself suffered, suffered and was tempted. Because he himself suffered and when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Are you being tempted this morning? Are you being tempted to fear? Are you being tempted to worry? To fret? Are you being tempted to be angry and lash out, to be bitter? He's able to help you today. He's able to help you overcome. Are you, are you worried about the future? 
How many of you would say, I'm worried about getting old? I'm worried about aging. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to ask again for a show of hands. How many of you would say, I'm worrying about aging? Thank you, thank you, thank you. How many would say, I'm worrying about our government today, our nation? Thank you. How many worry, I'm worried about my grandkids living in this nation? I'm worried about my kids. Oh, gosh. But one great hope and truth that I hold on to is Jesus is able to help those who are being tempted. He is my help. And he sent me a helper who is the Holy Spirit. And the same helper who is the Holy Spirit that he gave to me, he gave to Parker and Reagan and Campbell and Kennedy. He gave the same to McKinley and to Kylie, to your children and to mine. He gave the helper of the Holy Spirit and Jesus helps those who are being tempted. So the next time you're tempted, I want you to remember this. Jesus lived perfectly and died and rose from the grave, victorious over death and all the snares of the enemy so that he can help me. So that he can help me. When when. Parker and Reagan were little and I would be working on something. They wanted to help. They wanted to help. And they would come right along beside of me and they would help. They'd help carry off my tools. <laughs> they would kick things that I had set up uh, and knock over the bolts or the screws. I was installing a, uh, I was installing a, a lamp post light outside our house. One day, one hot, hot summer's day, and Kennedy was helping me. And, uh, and when I was wiring it into the circuit box, I knew I really couldn't use help at that point because I needed to focus. And I told her, I said, if you'll let me do this and let me concentrate, then you can help me outside. And she said, okay. So while I was working on the circuit box, she rode her bike right here behind me and just sang in her head out just loud as and I said I need a little bit more help <laughs> and she said yeah what I said can you go upstairs and help Kenda I know how to I know how to do this work this so and when I get outside you can help me there so she went upstairs to help Kenda and when I got up upstairs to outside to install the lamp post and do all the electrical work she helped me there and uh, and we got through it, and and she was a good helper. And you know what? All of us need help, especially as we get older. Kids sometimes think they don't need the help of a parent, and then they realize a little bit later, well, maybe I do need the help of a parent. But you know what? We're all children of a good father. And friends, I want you to know, you can't make it without the help of God. You can't make it without the help of God. You can't make it without the help of Jesus Christ. And you can't make it without the daily fellowship and help of the Holy Spirit. He will bring you peace where there is no peace. He will calm the storm in your life. He will cause you to understand that this isn't, this isn't permanent. This didn't come to stay. This is temporary. This too shall pass. And in these last days, we need to hold on to our logic and reason that if God be for us, who or what can be against us? If God is on my side, then I can prevail. Jesus said, fear not the world, for I have overcome it. And beloved, today, I want you to know that if you are being tempted, Jesus is here to help. If you're being tempted to worry, Jesus is here to offer certainty and assurance and peace. If you're here to fear, if you're tempted to fear, he's going to give you courage and cause you to be bold and very courageous. If you're tempted to look to the world and, and think, my goodness, why has our country gone so far? The Holy Spirit will be there to give you discernment and understanding and reveal to you they're just being who they are. In times past, the world was worse than it is today. In the times that the Bible was written, 
The world was worse in that day than it is in ours. But the church always overcomes. And so do the saints of God. They always overcome. God always makes a way through the desert. He causes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. And as long as I am leaning to him, he will help me and he will help you. Last week I shared this and I want to I touch on it again. I, t- I told you last week that if your hope is in family, you will be disappointed. And I... I want, you, I, I want you to understand this, not as a way to attack your family or your family relationships, but uh, our hope is to be in Jesus. The Word of God says in 1 Peter that Jesus is a living hope. He is hope. And one day there's going to be something that comes. If the Lord should tarry, there's going to be something that separates us from family, and that is death. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. But if our hope is in Jesus and our lives are hidden with Jesus and our loved ones are in Jesus, we have this certainty and this assurance and this hope that when Jesus comes back, he will bring back with him those loved ones and we will see them face to face. We will see mom again and we'll see dad again. We'll see grandma and grandpa. We'll see siblings and brothers and sisters and nieces. We will see everybody who has gone on before us who was in Jesus because Jesus is a living hope. All our hope is in Jesus. Friends, we can't help passing from life unto death, but Jesus gave us victory over death. So all of our hope is in Jesus today. All of our hope is in Jesus, and he will never let us down. Jesus has never let us down, and he never will. Listen to this. I want to share this. Evangelist Billy Graham reported this. This was in his book. This was in Decision Magazine. He put it actually in several books. Evangelist Billy Graham said that his grandmother, as his grandmother was passing away, and the family was distraught and upset, and they felt so lonely, but they knew she had lived out her days in her years, and she was ready to go be with Jesus. Friends, listen to me. When you, when you get old enough, and we get old enough, and I get old enough, I'm not going to want to be kept alive by machines and medicine. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to go be with Jesus. I'm going to want to go be with family. I love this world, but heaven is not here. Heaven is over there. Amen? I want to go be with Jesus. I want to see Jesus. The word of God says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I want to see God. I want to see Jesus. And evangelist Billy Graham said they were so distraught and they were so upset and they were grieved. They had lost their grandfather just a, a short time before. And Billy Graham said the room she was, she was in was filled with sorrow and grief and loneliness as this this matriarch, this, this grandmother was passing. And she said, and he said, but as she neared death, she quieted down and her spirit calmed down and she became peaceful. And just this, this countenance of rest and grace and peace came upon her face and also her whole body and she just relaxed as she was still alive. And Billy Graham said this, a soft and heavenly light filled the bedroom. She sat up in bed and almost laughingly said, I see Jesus. This is the testimony and the account of Billy Graham documented by the family. I see Jesus. He has his arms outstretched to me. And then she said, and I see the angels. And then she said, And I see Ben. Ben was her husband who had passed away a short time earlier. And then she laid back down in that bed and passed from life unto eternal life. Friends, all of our hope is in Jesus. And when we pass, if the Lord should tarry, from life unto death, Jesus will send his angels to collect you and to collect me. Just as he did your father, your mother. He will send angels to collect us. 
that where he is, there we may be also. And friends, we will know freedom like we've never known freedom. We will be free from sickness, from bondage, from age, from the effects of age. We'll be free from worry. Scripture says that the former things we will remember no more. Can you imagine not remembering grief and sorrow? Not remembering war? Not remembering depression? Not remembering offense, hurt, things that people did and things that people said? You will remember it no more. That's freedom. That's freedom. And that's the freedom I'm looking forward to. And that's the freedom I'm going to hold on to. And I won't trade it and I won't give it up. <clears throat> We've been purposed and made for that freedom. And we're going to receive it by faith. <clears throat> I want to share this one more. Reverend John G. Patton was a missionary to the South Sea Islands, he and his wife, in the early 1900s, or maybe even 1800s. And they lived, and mis their missionary field was among the cannibals in the South Sea Islands, cannibals that kill people and eat flesh. And one night, the hostile, hostile natives surrounded the mission's headquarters, and it was just he and his wife there. And, and they had weapons and torches and their plans were clear. They intended to kill he and his wife and burn the mission to the ground. The Patents turned to God in prayer. Friends, that's our greatest offensive weapon is prayer. Prayer. We're told to pray always with all prayer and supplication and pray about everything and take everything to God in prayer. The Patents turned to God in prayer for mercy and they prayed throughout the entire night. About a year later, the chief of the native tribe was converted and became a Christian. They, they prayed all through the night, and the natives who were restless and wanted to destroy and kill, they dispersed and they just went home. They never attacked, they never burned, they never threw one stone or overturned one uh, piece of furniture. They just, they left. They took their torches and weapons and they left the headquarters and the mission alone. About a year later, the chief of the, of the tribe uh, was converted and became a Christian. John G. Patton, who was eager to understand what happened that night, once he, he formed a relationship with, with the chief, the tribal chief, he asked him, he said, uh, Why did you guys not attack us and kill us and put an end to us that night when you came with torches and weapons? And, uh, and the chief... Uh, Surprised him by, by answering, uh, asking him a question. He said, who were all those men you had around you surrounding the mission that night? <laughs> and Patton answered, there were no men there, just my wife and myself. The chief then explained that he and his warriors had seen hundreds of men standing outside the mission headquarters. All the men were dressed in shining garments with swords drawn. And those guards completely encircled the place. And he and his warriors dared not attack the mission. <laughs> what happened? God enabled those cannibals, those warring cannibals and natives, their eyes to be opened. And they saw in the spiritual realm and they saw angels that were sent to protect the missionaries from death and destruction. Why do I say that? Because... If Jesus is here to help us and the angels is here to help us and the Holy Spirit is here to help us, friends, we need not worry. We need not worry about the pestilence that stalks by day or the, the people that come around at night. We are sheltered in the arms of God. We are sheltered in the arms of God. And friends, God won't let you down. God won't let you down. Until God is through with you, nothing can happen. Nothing can take you out. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Reagan, would you come back to the keyboard this morning? Praise God. Friends, 
Our hope today is in Jesus. All our hope today needs to be in Jesus. Our families one day will go on to be with Jesus. But if our treasure and our hope is in Jesus, then all relationships that we have is transcendent. Time doesn't matter. One day you will see family and loved ones again and be reunited with them forever. You have eternal relationships waiting for you in heaven. And what a day that will be when Jesus enters into this world. Amen? Reagan has a song that's entitled, My Jesus. And there's not a sinner that he can't save. And there's not a burden that he can't lift. There's not a burden that he can't give you more strength to endure. There's not a sickness that he can't heal. And there's not a weapon that he can't destroy. And there is not a chain that he cannot break. Jesus is all of our hope. He lived a perfect life. He died. He was raised to victory so that you and I can be free. And right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, I speak over you. You are free. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Open your heart and open your mind and receive today. Let every burden go. Let every fear, every uncertainty, lay it to rest. God is in control. Your Father is in control. And Jesus is here today to help you and to help me through every season of our lives. He will be there. And just like Billy Graham said of his grandmother, He'll be there when we pass, should the Lord tarry. And He will take us home to be in a place where we will know freedom like never before. Father, I pray blessing, peace, hope, and freedom through Jesus Christ and the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit upon these, your people. We thank you that we are free, free indeed. And we will no longer take upon ourselves chains to be slaves to sin, to fear, to worry, to uncertainty. We are free. We will take the fight to the enemy and we will declare it was for freedom that Christ set me free. Thank you for that freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Ray, you can go ahead and sing. You can stop that recording.